Welcome to the Bold Top by Joe podcast, coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. We are back. What's up, Doc? Not much, man. How are you doing? Uh, you know. Yeah. Part 10? Part 10. Nah. <laughs> We've only done a few together. <laughs> part 100? Part 100 of this episode. This is our this is our 100th episode together. 100th episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> minus like 10? Minus 10. <laughs> so, um, let's jump right. Let's just jump right in this. Uh, since we have a lot of talk, lot to talk yeah. about. What are your opinions on this Disney Little Mermaid stuff and all this stuff going on right now? Damn, dude, there's a lot to it, dude. I mean, Disney has done some crazy junk li- lately. Like, um, they're losing money like crazy. Um, they've even like said they are gonna stop. Um, what's it called? Uh, they're gonna stop. Re- um putting money into like um disney plus because i guess they're losing so much money because of all the uh, all the changes that they're making like example like uh the star wars franchise right now is struggling because um they keep just putting women into everything Mm -hmm. so um the first thing was uh, the whole uh mandalorian thing this season was Mm -hmm. just about uh uh, bo katan and people are just kind of like, it has nothing to do with the Mandalorian anymore, you know? Yeah. And um, they're using that whole thing with appropriation and then um, also them changing, like, you know, every character with either a woman or they change characters with their races. So, like, the Little Mermaid thing, that's literally, like, <clears throat> I mean, I really don't care. The mermaid is a mermaid, you know? It's mm-hmm. not a real thing, you know. Maybe it was back in the day. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I believe in Sasquatch and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, but uh, honestly, I really don't care because mm-hmm. I'm not gonna watch it. I never even liked the movie. But when you make it so blunt out there, you're already losing the audience. I mean, everyone's complaining about it just because she's African American. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Cool. But um, Disney has done that a lot with the different characters that they're going nuts. Like uh, the Lilo and Stitch, you know, the girl that's going to play, you know, um, Lilo's sister. She's not full Hawaiian and she's not dark. So people are going crazy about that, too. You know, um, you know, I, I think where this whole thing went wrong is um, they made them all white from the beginning. True. So, you know, now any little changes of narrative or changes of race, it's going to affect it because everybody's used to seeing that everyone likes nostalgia. Yeah. The yeah. same, the same, pe- the same characters. No the one likes change. Characters. And I think that when they started making these movies, it's like they were all white. Then at the same time, it's like, how racist was it back then that all these characters are all white why couldn't they put in you know brown black you know princesses and prince i mean look at look at the comic books it's a lot of the superheroes are you know i mean it's a mismatch of stuff but a lot of the superheroes are all white most of them yeah there is some that are you know like uh, uh there is some that th- their origins they were they were not white right or right, some, of them, right. some of them weren't men some of them were women or whatever yeah. but you know when when you comic books is a little bit different when it comes to disney disney's for for kids and you know all kinds of stuff and and i think that that's where they went wrong is they should have they should have yeah used you know why can they be a mexican little mermaid why can they be a, True. You, know, a, you know what i mean so now it's all jacked up and because now they're 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 changing everything, and now it's, and now people are getting upset about it. You know what I mean? And I, that's what yeah. I think. It's like that's where I, they screwed I, up from the beginning. I honestly think like if people really saw it as like just entertainment, mm-hmm. then it's just entertainment. Everything's going to change. 
I, I think for like Disney and like other companies, it's just more for appropriation, like uh, whatever they think is good for this age. Right. You know, they want to make an impact, but they're not really making an impact in anything. They're just doing stuff that pisses people off, that people who really care about these things, like stuff we grew up with and all that, mm-hmm. which in a sense, it's kind of like worthless because who cares? Like, I mean, it's just a property. You grew up with it. Cool. But at the end of the day, it's just a cartoon, you know, and it's like you're pissed off because they made her a black girl, you know? So I there's, mean, um, um, there's a, uh, this is by CNN Entertainment, and it talks mm-hmm. about the Little Mermaid stuff. And mm-hmm. like some of this stuff is rough, dude. So, like, it's, uh, I'll read a little bit about it and then we can, we, we yeah. can just jump in in it. It says analysis, a definitive rebuttal to every racist Little Mermaid argument. And then it says, um, ever since Disney released the first look for its 2023 live action remake of The Little Mermaid, the internet has been sodden with wave after wave of racist critics complaining that Ariel, the completely fictional under, underwater fish woman, shouldn't be black. Hashtags like hashtag not my Ariel are bouncing around social media. So the claim, the Little Mermaid is a Danish story. Therefore, Ariel should be white. The original Little Mermaid, hmm. quote unquote, story was written by Hans Christian Andersen and first published in 1837. If we're going to dignify this argument, according to text, to text, Ariel and the rest of her mermaid kin are from, quote unquote, far out in the ocean. Literally the opening lines of the story, the bottom of the sea. So no, Denmark or anywhere near it. The next claim is mermaids live under sea and therefore would not have dark skin. <laughs> from... <laughs> From a scientific perspective, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have someone with darker skin who lives deep deep in the ocean says... Oh, my God. They really right. went deep on this junk. Huh? Yeah. It says, so it's says, a cartoon, dude. I know. It says, so far, says so, so says far-right pundit Matt Walsh, who opinioned about the Little Mermaid casting on the Matt Walsh show. He claims that the frame, the comment as a joke since he goes off... Since he goes on to say what that has, uh, quote unquote, not only should be the little memory be pale, she should actually be translucent, quote. Okay. Uh, uh, it's Matt Walsh, you know, that's the way, yeah, but yeah, okay. That's Here's another opinion. one. Here's a second. I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I like that translucent thing. I would go with that. Translucent? Purple. Yeah, for sure. Frigging cloak color or something, you know? Yeah. Here's a um, third claim. Mermaids are European mythological figure, and therefore Ariel should be white. Numerous Twitter scra- scraps have cropped up with the people trying to argue European folklore or even Homerian epics like the Odyssey and some sort oh, okay. of monopoly of the idea of the mermaids. In reality, it's fascinating to see how many different cultures throughout history have arrived at parallel folklorical themes. Humanoid creatures that dwell in the water are part of innumerable mythologies around the world. So... Like the real story of the Little Mermaid, it's not what people think that the story is. Hmm. You know, it's, it's it has a dark. It has oh, a dark. A uh, lot of those Disney movies have dark. Um, uh, yeah, the real stories are dark. I think. Uh, have you heard of the Sleeping Beauty, or was mm-hmm. it Snow White, where one of them she's actually sleeping and she gets raped by the prince, mm-hmm. and then she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of those stories is like that too. Pinocchio too was another one. Um, there is a Italian version, which I can't find, but I remember reading about it a couple of years ago, where Pinocchio was actually a boy, and or I think it was a girl at first, and he changes it to a boy. Damn. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's hard to find. Like I've been trying to look for it again. I've been just to send it to you. So it'll be like, what the hell? But um, there was a Pinocchio story like that, too. Like one of those old old stories back in the day, but they changed it, you know? Mm-hmm. But uh, so what's the true story on uh, Little Mermaid then? So the original tale, the Little Mermaid fell under the spell of a human whom she saves from drowning. But unlike Disney's adaptation, she was not driven to wish for her legs out of curiosity for life on Earth. On her love for the prince, for the yeah, for the princess. In Anderson's story, okay, so this story was by uh, was written by Hans Christian Anderson. 
In Anderson's story, the young murmur le- learns that the souls of humans are eternal and decides to go to the witch to get legs so that she too can acquire this ability by marrying a human. Once again, the Danish author story is much less squeamish than Disney's. The Little Mermaid's has her tongue cut out by the witch and the quote unquote creation of her legs is so oh, they painful. Should have left that. <laughs> yeah. That every step she takes feels that she was being pierced by knives. Ah, uh, yeah, I did hear about that part, I remember. Because um, she's not used to having legs, right? Right, because she's yeah. a mermaid. Yeah. So it also says, uh, similarly, you'll find no happily ever after. For Hans Christian Andersen, the prince falls in love with another woman and decides to marry her. So Ariel knows that she is doomed to have her heart broken, literally, and to be turned into a sea foam. In a fit of despair, urged on by her sisters, the young woman decides to stab Prince Eric, her only means of breaking her curse. Oh, and I want to see this version here. better, dude. <laughs> but at the last moment, Ariel finally decides to spare him as she throws herself into the sea, ready to accept her fate. She joins a metaphorical paradise, quote-unquote, the woman of the air, as a reward for her good deed. No great, no great love story then. Hans Christian Andersen portrays a younger woman who idolizes her future and sacrifices everything to get there without taking into account the risk of war- and warnings. It is not her love for the prince that drives her to leave the ocean, but her desire to be immortal. Damn. Wow. Hey, that's a better version, dude. That's really good. Yeah. That's a really, that's just that the original really, one. That sounds even better than like the prince and the yeah. guy. Yeah. All the stupid uh, Disney BS. It's like, dude. damn, that's a dope one. Look up, I, I think it's Snow White or Sleeping Beauty one, the one, the real story, the the bad, like it's, it's bad, dude. Like, I think it's Snow White or Sleeping Beauty. Um, where she literally is raped by a guy who finds her body there and she's I'll, pregnant. I'll give you, I'll give you, um, here's, here's a few of them. Um, Sleeping Beauty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's, here's one. Similar to Little Mermaid, Sleeping Beauty is another Disney princess tale that thankfully gets a light hearted reimagining. Okay, in the film uh-huh. The Sleeping and the Curse, Aurora is awakened by the kiss of a handsome prince. But in Jim Batista's Basile Sun, Moon, and Thalia, Thalia is cured when her child sucks the poison from her finger. The problem, however, is that a neighboring king rapes Thalia in her slumber, which uh-huh. leads to the birth of her children in the first place. Yeah. The original tale definitely isn't suitable for younger fans, especially in the added story of the queen plotting to cook and feed the children to the cheating king. Yep. Charles Perrault's updates tale is more aligned with Disney's animated film, but the child (laughs) eating still (laughs) rears the ugly head. That is, dude. uh, That was that's crazy. I told you, dude. Crazy story. I didn't know about the 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 queen trying to uh, cook the kids for the the king. That yeah. But yeah, dude. Like it's nuts because like I remember reading it a long time ago, and I was like, what? But it's like weird because it's like almost a pedo thing because she's like young, really, really young. And she's in, she's sleeping and he goes over there and he can't wake her up. So he ends up just because he finds her there in the forest somewhere and he just rapes her, dude. Like he just says, screw it. And she's like, she's, and it says the age in the book, like she's like 16 or something. She's like underaged. And um, I was like, dude, this is demented, you know. Uh, uh, But all those Disney stories have a different origin. Like they're pretty pretty nuts here's, um, uh, here's another one this is i'm getting this off of fandom but they're everywhere you can look them up everywhere it's how rapunzel oh yeah yeah the rapunzel one's pretty crazy too yeah. i haven't read that one fully but i i've heard of it it says unlike disney's tangled the brothers grim version of rapunzel story expands on her time spent locked away in the tower we get the fame then famous line rapunzel rapunzel let down your hair and more details about her love story with the prince. However, the tale doesn't end there. It gets much darker. When Dame Gothel discovers Rapunzel's romance and pregnancy, she chops off Rapunzel's hair. Also, the prince is blinded by thorns in an accident after Gothel tries to kill him. Damn. Disney made the right call after altering the story for the animated film in Tangled. Rapunzel comes across as more artistic in Flynn, as cooler than the average price. So... That's 
really weird. <laughs> Here's Snow dude, White. Dude, like old stories, like if you look at like old folklore stories that have been made like nicer by Disney or other other things, like, dude, they got some dark stories, dude. People were like demented back in the day, dude. Like in the 30s and 20s and stuff when a lot of these stories were uh, coming to like the U.S. because of immigrants and stuff. They're they're pretty demented, dude. Like, there's some stories that I, I remember reading, and I was just like, "What the heck? Like, is this for reals?" You know, um, just it's you gotta just look for them, dude. You'd be like, "What the heck?" Kind of reminds me of uh, remember that book uh, when you were a kid in elementary, uh, scary stories. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like that. Like you get some like the one with the spider spider yeah. bite, and then it blows up while she's like washing her face. Yeah, you got stuff like that. Disney, ha- a lot of Disney stories are like that, dude. Like they have something twisted in them, you know? Here's Snow White. Snow oh, White yeah, story yeah. in the 1937 film removes some of the darker plot elements from her adventure in the fairy tale. In the Brothers Grimm story, the huntsman still allows Snow White to escape after refusing to kill her. However, the evil queen doesn't give and tries to murder Snow White a few more times before resorting to the poison apple. Before delivering the fruit, she suffocates Snow White with a lace <laughs> with a lace <laughs> bodice bodice or uh, bodice and even poisons her <laughs> with and Ducey. even poison poisons For those her old school people <laughs> with a comb. In addition in addition to the murder what attempts, the, hell? The, the evil queen is killed at Snow White's wedding when she is forced to dance in red hot iron slippers. What? Man. That's kind of cool. That's Red crazy. Hot Slippers, dude. Have you... Um, so there's a theory supposedly with Snow White that she doesn't live at the end. She actually dies after she bites the apple. Mm-hmm. because, And then she's going into the afterlife. So when the prince gets her, the at the end of the movie, you see the castle and everything. And it looks like the castle's floating. And it's because the uh, prince picks her up in her death and takes her with her. Like, he's dead, too. And he, you know, Prince Charming takes her into heaven and stuff. If you watch, like, the last part of, of, of Snow White, it, it, it shows that. And you you look at it, you're like, what? And supposedly she, she didn't make it. She died after she bit into the apple. Damn. Yeah, it's a crazy joke, dude. Like, all these theories and stuff, you know? But, uh they kind of make sense, though. But Here's uh, right. one last one. The Princess right. and the Frog. I don't okay. know this one. Tiana's adventure in The Princess and the Frog is completely different than the Brothers Grimm version. The Frog Prince, in the original fairy tale, the main character is spoiled princess who refuses to help a cursed prince. When the Frog Prince begs her to fulfill her promise to spend time with him, she tries to send him away. And to make matters worse, the curse isn't broken with a kiss but by the princess throwing the frog against the wall. God. What the hell? Brothers Grimm stories are dope, though, dude. They got some good stories. They are. This is wild, yeah, dude. Then, this is wild. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and as a lot of people don't, uh, people don't know this. Like, here's, I don't know. Uh, did I do Cinderella? I'll do Cinderella. I'll do one more. In the 1950 animated film about Cinderella and her magical night, at the ball mostly stays true to the original tale. Many elements from Charles Perrault's Cendrillion are carried over, including the glass slippers and the fairy godmother. However, Cinderella's other e- equally popularized tale, I don't even know how to say this word, Ashen, Ashen Putel by the Brothers Grimm is where things take a darker turn. Cinderella still loses her slipper at the ball, but in this version, her wicked stepmother cuts off the toes and heels from her daughter's feet to ensure they fit in the gold slipper. Luckily, the prince discovers Cinderella and the evil stepsisters and stepmother are defeated. The stepsisters are even blinded by doves on the Cinderella's wedding. What? Cinderella's wedding day as That's a That's demented, dude. Wild. Yeah. We should write our own, dude. This is wild. Yeah. It's like some weird shows, like the, the shows that we watched. Remember that Prime show that we watched? Um... They never made a season two, but it was um, like eight episodes of just different weird stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 Electric uh, Dreams. Um, is that what it was? Yeah, that's what it's called. Electric Dreams, I think. Yeah. I feel this is just weird stories like that. Dude, like, you know what they should do is they should remake these into actual movies. 
but have the dark ones. Yeah, and see how people complain about that. <laughs> like, like for horror movies. Instead of racism and all that stuff, they should just do these, you know? Yeah, they should um, just do horror movies. Don't they have these. like some... I, I know they have horror movies of like... They do. Winnie the, the Pooh. Winnie, the, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. That yeah, yeah, weird. there's a that Winnie the Pooh weird, one, right? Dude. Yeah. Like, I didn't um, hear anybody complain about that. Dude, but, supposedly, like, the Winnie the Pooh one is that uh, the little kid is, um, what's his name? What's Winnie Christopher Pooh's? Robin. Yeah, Christopher Robin is, like, mentally ill in some way. Like, he, it's not that he has Down syndrome. He has some mental illness. And that's why he hallucinates and he sees his, oh, his really? stuffed animals, like. Well, in the movie, yeah. like, in the movie, it's, he. I watched it, like, a couple there's a movie of, or well, there's a movie it's a it's a horror movie and i guess the winnie the pooh and Piglet and everybody goes all nuts because i think igor dies yeah yeah and yeah. christopher robin leaves them and uh. they get sad so they start murdering everybody <laughs> yeah and these these dude it's weird, weird. it's hey, weird um, there's this guy on uh, instagram i'll have to send him to you but he uh i think i sent it to you the toy story one where um, Andy is beating on the toys and he's telling oh, yeah. Woody to move, and then and then he finally like breaks Mister Potato Head and he cracks him open, and then um, he looks at Andy. He's like, he looks. He tells Andy like, "We never talk to you because if we talk to you, you get cancer." Because he tells him like, "Andy, you have cancer," and he's like, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, we never came alive because if we tell you." If we, we did, it's like you knew that we were alive. You get cancer automatically. And then all of a sudden, yeah. Andy's on the bed dying. And he's like, why'd you do this to me? He's like, you pushed me too far. Because he ends up like hammering and killing Mr. Potato Head. Did I send it to you? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's hilarious. And then they ask about what, what was the kid who used to bully like or beat up on all the toys and stuff? What was his name? Um um the bully well, yeah, the he, bully. Uh, yeah. yeah woody even tells him about that that's why you don't see him around because that kid died of like <laughs> cancer dude. really <laughs> yeah like that's what it insinuates like it's I, I can't remember but it's this um he's an animator on instagram and he's the one who wrote that story it's hilarious it's a big old youtube one too it's sick um, Sid, his Sid, name is Sid, 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 yeah. Hello. Sid died of cancer because he found out that the the toys talk and he made mm-hmm. he was torturing you know? them. So they didn't like him, so they reveal themselves to him. Once he reveals him, he gets cancer automatically. He goes, That's why Sid's no longer around, you know. And he's like, What the hell? <laughs> he goes, How could you do this to me? And Woody's like, You pushed me too far, Andy. I didn't want to do this. You pushed me too far. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it's hilarious, dude. I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, dude, this is demented, dude. But um There's yeah, a lot should... of bad there's a lot of bad shit that you know what I mean. I mean there's <laughs> I mean, I mean these but these people, these these are uh, old, you know. It's it's the original people. stories that are like it's how it used to be. Kind of like, like uh, what was the other one? Santa Claus one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Santa Claus is actually Santa Claus. Original origin is uh, that that monster from Germany. What's his yeah. name? Uh, uh, Freaking he and Santa was never good. He would always give out coal every every time you know to any kid. Um, what was that? Um. Uh, it's it's the the monster from Yule. Type in Yule, Y U L E, um, and he looks like the devil, dude, and like pawn put together. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, this is Krampus legend. This is by Britannica, so uh-huh. this is, this is yeah. legit. Krampus in Central European popular legend, a half goat, half demon uh, monster uh-huh. that punishes misbehaving children at Christmas yes. time. It always has to do with kids. Yes. So. Um, so Pawn, going back to that, do you remember the movie? Um, what's that movie called? Uh, it, it's where the lion is like the savior and uh, uh Narnia, 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 Narnia. Okay, yeah. remember the first Narnia? They go into yes. the he, she, the little girl goes into the closet, mm-hmm. into the cabinet, and everything. She's in another world in the snow, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, do you remember who saved her when she went to the snow and she like she fainted or something? Remember that. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, beginning. The beginning, yeah. Yeah, it's the guy who plays uh, from Split, that guy, uh, Professor yeah. X, the younger Professor version. Professor X, yeah. Yeah, um, McAvoy. So mm-hmm. what he does, he he tells her when she wakes up, she's laying in his bed in his in his room. And um, she straight out tell, he straight out tells her, I've done something so wrong. I should have never done it, this, this, and that. And she's like, what do you mean? You don't think about it. But he is a depiction of Pawn. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he attracts kids and he violates them. So mm-hmm. out of nowhere, he says, oh, I've called the queen on you. But he's like, it, when you look at him and the way he's acting, he acts like he did something to her. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But then he says, no, I called the queen on you. You got to get out of here. But they play it off. But if you really think about it, it has a second meaning to it. He did something to the little girl. You know what I mean? It's the craziest mm-hmm. thing. But when I saw that, I, I remember studying about it, you know, and I was like, dude, that's pawn. I go, that dude used a flute. Pipe Piper. What did the Pipe Piper do? Mm-hmm. He used to use a flute and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, he used to get little kids and he used to lure them into a cave. Um, if you read his the story of Pipe Piper, the real story origin is the same thing as these Disney movies. There's a dark like thing to it he would molest kids dude rape kids then he would take them away um and then you come to and then that 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 creature ends up turning into other like other cultures and stuff um it's like fairies so fairies uh uh, would trade out their kid uh, would trade out the kid and they would put themselves into the beds and be part of the family and they destroy the family there's a horror movie too that shows a fairy that does that I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's a horror movie that came out a couple of years ago. And oh, the about, Tooth Fairy? Yeah. And yeah, it, the they fairy. literally trade out the kid and everything, but they yeah. they raise those kids and they do stuff to those kids. So here's the crazy one. Mm-hmm. Peter Pan. Mm, yep. Kidnaps the real origin, kidnap kids, takes them to Neverland, and they're all yep. little boys. Mm-hmm. Peter Pan started... What was uh, uh, like a depiction of, and the story came out of, not all of it, but of the Pipe Piper. Pipe Piper mm-hmm. came out from Pat. Krampus, all that. It all has to do with little kids and freaking taking innocence from kids. Crazy mm-hmm. junk, huh? Like, I, I looked into it. Everyone might be like, oh, you're looking too deep into it or anything. But no, if you really look at it, man, everything has to do with kids. That's some weird junk, bro. <laughs> it's weird. Well, there's like it's a, nuts, dude. There's like a, a more on it. Uh, let me read it to you here because this yeah. is like wild. Like, that way, people know. Like so, Krampus, he is the devilish companion of Saint Nicholas. Krampus is believed to have originated in Germany, and his name derives from the German word Krampen, which means claw. Krampus was hmm. thought to have been part of pagan rituals for the winter solstice, according yeah. to the legend. He is Yule. the son of Yule. Mm -hmm. The nurse god of the underworld. With the spread of Christianity, Krampus became associated with Christmas. Despite the efforts by the Catholic Church to ban him, the creature and St. Nicholas are are said to arrive on the evening of December 5th, which is Krampus night. While St. Nicholas rewards nice children by leaving presents, Krampus beats those who are naughty with the branches (laughs) and sticks. In some cases, he's said to eat them or take them to hell. On December yeah. 6th, St. Nicholas Day, Damn, children dude. awaken to their gifts or nurse their injuries. Oh, my God. That's rough, dude. <laughs> That's but see, it all has to do with kids. If it's not doing something sexual, it's like it's still beating them, you know? I mean, uh, I don't know, dude. All these stories, dude, I always trip out when I read some of this stuff or when I come up. I have a friend, uh, uh, my buddy, He's he's very smart. He's into all this stuff, so he's always sending me junk, and he's like, "You got to read this." You got, and then all of a sudden, into the rabbit hole, dude. You're just reading constantly about this stuff. But that, that whole thing with Pond, like he's the one who taught me that, and he's uh, he's a professor at a college, and we just laugh about it, dude. And he's like, "Yeah, man." He goes, "This junk is crazy, dude." But um, we should make up our own stories, dude. Make millions, dude. This is wild. <laughs> What are you looking well, for? Well, you now? know, people people don't look, don't don't um something always has a background, dude. Yeah. If it's people in your face constantly, there's always something because it has a background, you know? There's like a lot of like crazy like crazy stuff when it comes to these folklore stories or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, supposedly uh Captain Hook is the one who's trying to save the kids, but yes. it's been it's been reverted to where He's trying to save the children. He ends up taking off, but Disney made him into a pirate, and that Peter Pan is actually the evil guy. So here's a, a I'm gonna here's a here's the thing of it. Uh-huh. So this is the 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 Peter Pan theory, right? It says, uh, of course, on the surface, the idea seems ludicrous, but with the added context of Barry's original story, the world of Peter Pan becomes more far more sinister. 
According to the story, the boys of the island vary, of course, in numbers according as they get killed and so on. And when they seem to be growing up, which is against the rules, Peter Pan thins them out. This this paints the supposedly sweet story of Peter Pan and Wendy in much darker light and the implication in the Pan murders and the Lost Boys who grew up. According to many variations of this Peter Pan theory, Hook is a former Lost Boy who escaped Peter Pan's oh, clutches and returned cool, to fight dude. against him. Yeah, I, I want to see that story. The theory suggests that Peter Pan's tendency to murder his friends once they begin to age to age serves as the true basis for the bad blood between Hook and himself and that the pirate's crew is made up of other former Lost Boys who help Hook resists Pan's magic. According to the theory, these Lost Boys chose to grow up but didn't want to leave their home and instead resisted the tyranny of Peter Pan. That's dope. That's a better story, man. Um, Peter Pan's a murderer. See, like, some, some way or another, like, it's always doing stuff to kids, dude. It's That's the thing that trips me out. It's like so many stories like this yeah, coincide with each other. And it, it, the, ba- the base of all the stories is something happening to kids. Why? Damn. That's what I always wonder. Why? You know? It's What's weird. the point of all that? It's just weird world stuff, dude. Damn. It, it, it's it's like child trafficking in literature. <laughs> yeah, dude. literally it is, dude. It trips you, you out. You think they made these stories to scare children so they can behave? I mean, honestly, I didn't need my mom to tell me these stories to behave. She just brought out the belt, dude. Because I feel like I these stories. <laughs> I feel like these stories were like kind of. I don't know. It's just me. I feel like they were made for. Back in the day, to like have these children not misbehave, and they're like, "I'm gonna, we're gonna call the Krampus." You know, if you behave, mm. you're gonna get gifts. If not, you're gonna get beat up. Oh, and I think if you were bad, it's kind of like the Baba Yaga. Have you heard the story of that? The true Baba Yaga is it's actually an old lady, an old witch. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not John Wick, dude. <laughs> it's yeah, look that one up too, dude. It's I. The- I don't know. Like, yeah, I think it was also too to scare kids to not go into the woods or something like that, you know? Wow. Yeah, it's like I I can't remember the whole story. I read it once and I I don't remember it. So it's it's been a while. Baba Yaga. Yeah, the true story. Here's a this is crazy. Um, Baba Yaga by uh, Wikipedia. In Slavic folklore, Baba Mm -hmm. Yaga, also spelled Baba Yaga from Polish, is a supernatural being, one of a trio of sisters of the same name who appears as a deformed or ferocious-looking woman. In fairy tales, Baba Yaga flies around in the mortar, wields and pestle, and dwells deep in the forest in a hut, usually described as as standing on chicken legs. Baba Yaga may help or hinder those who encounter or seek her out and may play a maternal role. She also has associations with the forest wildlife. According to Vladimir Prop's foretell morphology, morphology, Baba Yaga commonly appears as either a, a donor or a villain, or maybe altogether ambiguous. This is like Russian. Yeah, Baba Yaga is Russian. Yeah. There's a whole story, dude. There's so many stories about that thing. There was one where she kidnaps the kids and at night and stuff like that. And I don't know. I, I, maybe. Maybe just to scare kids. But, I mean, why would you want to scare kids that bad, dude? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, back what? in the day, kids were – there was like no – it was, like I mean, of, it was like a free for all, right? Or Well, I think you had – I think life was a lot easier because you had less distractions. So, example, like – you really didn't have to fight anything back in the day, you know, like honestly, nowadays everything gets to kids, you know, and back in the day they didn't have TV back in the day. They, they just had stories and, you know, they just play outside all the time. You know, this Baba Yaga seems like a, like a witch. Yeah. She's like a witch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got into it after uh, watching John Wick. So yeah, I, I didn't even know. Bobby, yeah. I didn't know that. You know, see, we're learning some stuff. Yeah, people have to be learning out of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. they, they I bet you oh, a lot of people from have appropriation no idea. to 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 all the to crazy folklore. stories. <laughs> people, like, dude, they have they have to be learning something because there's a lot of people that don't like. I didn't know about the Baba Yaga one. I knew yeah. about the Disney yeah. stuff, but I didn't know about the Baba Yaga. I just thought it was John Wick. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy I was like, who Damn. shoots and kills but, people and never yeah. dies. 
This is a good one. I think yeah, a yeah. lot of people are actually going to learn from this one. Yeah, I know. This was the first time we ever put our study into it. <laughs> yeah. We're getting, we're getting better at it. Oh, okay. That's what it okay, is. Yeah, we're getting yeah, better yeah, at yeah. it. We're, we're, Joe we're Rogan, we're coming. Up. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna take his platform. <laughs> Over here, Bull Talk by jo- Jose Roganes. Bull, bull, bull Talk by, <laughs> by <talk>. Pork Lores. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Cool, man. Cool. All right, brother. Well, we're out. I'll see you next time. Sounds good, man. Peace. All right. Peace. Thanks for checking out Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe.